What's up guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to remove the CIS distributor and everything here and also what components we're going to be keeping for when we go to EFI. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First and foremost, obviously I'll go ahead and show you what tools I use. So you're going to be using a 17, a 14, a 12, a 5mm Allen, a 10 short socket, a swivel, I'm using a quarter inch ratchet, a longer extension, and then a Phillips screwdriver. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do and start with is taking off all these guys right here. These right here are injectors. We're going to go ahead and take off all the caps. The way we're going to do that is we're going to be taking our 17 and our 14 wrench and we're going to be shoving the 17 down at the bottom so that way it gets locked on these grooves right here so that way when we go to loosen it we're obviously not stressing out the injector and then it's going to be spinning while we're trying to take it off so let's go ahead and take off all these six real quick okay now that we just broke loose all of our injectors what we're going to go ahead and do is grab our 12 millimeter and we're going to loosen up and take off our cold start valve. It should break loose fairly easy. Just go ahead and give it a quick little turn and then just like that it's off as well. Next what we're going to be doing is taking our 17 mil again and we're going to take off our return and our feed for our fuel. Now that our feed and our return are off what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go right here. This right here is a Phillips screw we're going to go ahead and loosen that clamp so that way we can take off the CIS without any problems. After we take off the Phillips screw there, there is three bolts, or three nuts, I apologize, holding down the CIS. You have one here, right in the front. You have another one in the back. And then you have one right down here in the side. Let me see if I can get some light on it for you. Right there. Obviously you're going to be using your swivel and your extension to get to this guy right here and then these two are obviously very straightforward and very easy to get. So let's go ahead and get that done real quick. Okay, so now that we have the hose clamp off there, we have our three bolts out, all of our injectors loose, as well as our cold start valve. There should be nothing else in the way from us to be able to just pull this thing right up. Okay, now that you can see that we removed the CIS, the next thing that we're going to be doing is actually removing the injectors, not just the injector lines. These little guys right here are a 5 millimeter, so you're going to go ahead and use that with your ratchet and then pull all these guys right out. All right, so now that we have all of our injector hold downs off, what we're going to do is pull our injectors right out just like this. So let's go ahead and grab all these really quick. Okay, now as you can see, all the injectors are out. And I'm going to let you guys know right now, you will be keeping these vanilla pieces right here. Uh, I'm personally going to be cleaning these, putting a new O-ring on it, so that way they're obviously not this crusty, but that way when they're in there, our new injectors can fit right in. I've had a bunch of people ask me, how is an injector supposed to fit inside of this hole? Well, it's not, they don't fit. You actually have to keep these guys right here. But obviously if you can, if they're not cracked or worn or destroyed, you can clean them and then go ahead and reuse them. You just need to replace the O-ring or at least that's what we do. But next what you're gonna be taking off is obviously the cold start valve. So let's go ahead and take this guy out really quick. So now that our cold start valve is off, 
we're going to go ahead and take off our IAC as well as our throttle position sensor. As you can see, we have two Phillips screws right here as well as the two on the side and then we have two 10 mils here that we're going to be taking off and then our throttle body is again a five millimeter Allen. So let's go ahead and take this guy off. And obviously when you take off this linkage, just get a screwdriver or a flathead or something and just pop that guy right off. It's, it shouldn't be too difficult to take off, but let's go ahead and get this done real quick as well. All right guys, so as you can see, everything is officially off that needs to be taken off. For the most part, the throttle linkage is gonna be staying just like that. Like I said, we will be cleaning this entire intake manifold as well as the throttle body because it is extremely gunky. So we're gonna be cleaning up all that stuff. But other than that, that is pretty much it. It's that easy to take off and remove. Obviously, we're gonna be replacing that whole entire CIS distributor with this guy right here. This right here is an M104 fuel rail. This is basically just the dual overhead cam version of this engine. So we replace that entire system with this one thing right here. Uh, this does get cut and modified. I'll go ahead and show you guys how to cut and modify the fuel rail as well as the throttle body to have the throttle position sensor fit as well as how to make the throttle body spacer. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.